Is it important? It's very crucial. Groovy. Little stereo. I'll say kick it and you'll just kick it with a tasty groove, okay? One, two, three, kick it. Woo! Oh, hi, Mark. <laughs> oh, you likes. It's time for the most crucial podcast with your host, me, Mark Franchise. Meh, meh, meow. <laughs> All right, what's up? Welcome back to the most crucial podcast. It is Mark Frankhaus, and joining me today, a super special guest, somebody who wears multiple hats in the entertainment industry, DJ, actor, author as well, Efren Ramirez joining me. How's it going, man? Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, man, thanks for taking the time to do this. We appreciate it. Like I said, you're all over the place in the entertainment industry. Um, you've been in some uh, serious movies, you know, Employee of the Month. You've made cameos, uh, Nacho Libre, Mr. and Mrs. Smith. Uh, of course, your role in Napoleon Dynamite as well. What was it that first drew you into acting? Being out of trouble. <laughs> <laughs> it's um, no, I, mean, I, I grew up in the neighborhood so, of Los Angeles, and I grew up with uh, four brothers. And my brothers and I would always beat each other up. We're always fighting in the house. Right. Like, we're just guys, you know, like, you know, we got to film them. Yeah, that or build a pirate ship. <laughs> right. Uh, you know, so, so, and then my mom put, um, my mom and dad put my brothers in the industry theater. And when I started to do theater um, in Los Angeles, it just changed. It became something else. And, and you know, it was just something I uh, I enjoyed being on stage. It was like a, you know, um, I don't know. I was like a tomato with um, with lines on my hands. <laughs> it, was just, it was just fun, you know. So. That's awesome. And you're you're a pretty big Shakespeare guy too, so that seems to yeah, go yeah. hand in hand. Were you into like improv and stuff? Were you a fan of that as well in theater? Yeah, yeah. My friends and I, um, you know, while I was going to college, I was part of an improv group, and we would actually go to Venice Beach, and you know, on Venice Boulevard, the boardwalk. Oh yeah. Be able to do, you know. You, you pay a permit, you know, and you, <laughs> you, you can do whatever you want. Basically, yeah. And I, we did some shows at the beach. It was like, it cool, you know? And um, at the end, you think, oh, yeah, I'm going to make a lot of money. I'm going to be rolling in the dough. <laughs> and you'd make, you make that day, you'd make five bucks. Right. So, you know, yeah, and so the five bucks was able to get me an in and out hamburger, and, and I took the bus back home. Right. That was my life. You know, uh, it, it, it works when you're... When you're working on, on you know, as an actor, whether, you, whether you're doing a, a comedy or a drama, because you can find some moments where you need that. You know, you need to humanize all the characters that you play in film. Yeah, absolutely. You were an actor well before your role in Napoleon Dynamite. How exactly did you get involved in on a professional level? I think it's um, my third year in college. Somebody, you know, um, I was doing theater in, 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 at the university, and somebody said, Hey, why don't you really do this? And I go, I am. <laughs> and they're like, No, 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 seriously. As an actor, we have a film. And why did I, I didn't know how to do that? I didn't know how to make that approach. But, but just because someone mentioned it to me, and I thought, maybe, maybe, maybe I could try it. Maybe I could do it. Um, and I started to to really investigate um, going to different acting schools in Hollywood and. In, and in Santa Monica, and, and, um, and study acting, you know, from studying improv to, to uh, you know, Viola Spolin to Michael Chekhov, Strasberg, um, uh, uh, the, you know, the sense memory, effective memory, and you start to really study acting. And then I did a showcase in front of agents, and an agent saw me and, and said, well, you know, we want to represent you and send you up to commercial auditions first and see what happens. And they said, you know, I said, book, I said to book commercials, and commercials, and moved on to TV shows. And it just got roads that got bigger and bigger and bigger. And I was like, wow, okay. You know, can I, I just asked myself that question, can I do this? Right. And, and it did, and it happened. So you, you literally just set up an audition in front of agents, and that just domino effect, basically, in terms of your career. Yeah. Were you approached about that role in Napoleon Dynamite? Yeah, I was working on a show at the time. Uh, there were two shows I worked on. One called Wonder Fox was it was called Boston Public. Okay, yeah. You know, and uh, and I was, a, I was a high school student, and then I, I worked on a show called Even Steven with Shia LaBeouf, and 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 it was for Disney. And that was a bully in that show. And I was like, okay, so <laughs> I had a script. Um, was you know with Napoleon Dynamite. We had an audition. I read it. I read the side, and I went, "What is this? This is weird." So, um, <laughs> right. Yeah, because you like, you're like, okay, this is completely different. So um, I remember having to, to go to my father's closet 
and I put on his clothes, you know, and you start to imagine what the character is like, and you go, all right, let's see what happens. So I go to Fox Studios, and I'm like, okay, we do the audition, and and they you know they call me back, and I meet the director and the producers, and they give me some notes, and I do it, and you know, you never know. You just hope that if you do your best and you make sure you know your lines, you get there early, yeah, you know, and and you and you share some ideas of the character. That's all you can do. Next, you know it. I'm, I'm flying to Preston, Idaho. You know, going to go shoot this movie as a lead role as a character. You know, character role. Is that wow? This is really happening. Yeah. Let's see what happens. So. That's kind of funny because you, you had mentioned when you were reading, you're like, "This is weird." Was that was that kind of like the mindset on on the uh, set as well? Because even my first time seeing the movie, I was like, "This movie is so weird." <laughs> it, it took me; I had to watch it again because I was so thrown off by it. I'd never seen anything that was shot and just scripted like that before. It was such a, a unique film experience that you know it's it's not really a surprise to me that it's become such a cult classic. Now is is that kind of the mindset? Mindset that you guys had the time. Did you ever think, you know, years down the line, that you know this movie would end up being this, you know, <laughs> major call classic? No, it, it. You know, our idea was to make a film and 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 have a really good time and put something as my real. So I could show all the directors and producers, like, look, I can act. So, um, you know, and I, yeah, you have when you when you make a movie, you have no idea what the results are going to be. You know, and I, and I, somewhere in my gut, you know, I just thought, like, this story's, okay, what's, what's this about? Um, there's a movie um, that came out in the 70s called Midnight Cowboy. Yeah. With John Boyd and Dustin Hoffman. Where these two characters are strangers to each other. They become best friends. And in that friendship, they have each other's dreams come true. And that's the same exact thing that happened with Pedro and Napoleon. Yeah. So, wow. That, I'm a, I'm a, Try that. Let's see what happens. You know, uh, and, 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 and that was the first time when I met uh, the actor Uncle Rico, Jonathan Gwais. Yeah. Um, who gave me really good advice as an actor and um, as a storyteller. And he's such a wonderful actor. And, and, and John Heater, who plays Napoleon, is, is a natural. So, and everybody who was on the set, most of them, most of everyone knew each other. So when I came on board, I felt like... Um, you know, am I doing the right thing? Am I? Am I, I? I hope I don't mess this one up. You know, mm-hmm. um, and and it was very welcoming, and because of that, we became such an immediate family. And that's cool. I think that's a, the very message of the movie itself is about that. It is about family, and that's why it resonates to everyone, to all families, because we go as funny as it is. We we all can relate to each character because we are ones like them. It's funny you say that, too, because there's like a running joke in my family, not necessarily a joke, but my uh, cousin, Abby, her her nickname is Pedro because of the film. And it's just like an inside family thing where the vote for Pedro thing has always stuck around. And that's been her nickname ever since she was little, which is like I said, it's just funny that you say that because it absolutely it, you know, it resonated with them. And it, it seems like this role, especially seems like a lot of doors were opening for you after it came out and had the success that it did. You continued your career. You were showing up on like Robot Chicken and American Dad, and even Str- uh, uh, Scrubs as well. That was wild. Yeah, I'm um, I'm working on a series right now. Uh, really? Called That's so great. Where I'm playing an astronaut, and I'm working with Luis Guzman and Sir Ben Kingsley and and, and um, uh, Jimmy Simpson and Jackie Weaver. It's just it. it uh, I mean, it's uh, since since the point that I might, you know, the two movies a year and. And I play so many different characters, and I think it's <laughs> important to place characters and yeah. live their lives. And people, people are drawn to that, and it's good. And that's super important, too, because I, I've always imagined part of being an actor is you really have to become that character. And there's a fine line that you have to walk if you're, you know, if you're too much, it's almost unbelievable. But there's a fine line when it comes literally becoming that character and not making it feel like one, you know? Yeah, yeah. And you, you know, when you when you approach material as an actor, it's, it, it leads to so many more questions. You know, you've got to be able to be able to go... Um, Keep thinking, like, what what else is there? Because there's so much to a life. You remember, in a movie, there's only two hours. Yeah. And lifetime, you know, you're trying to put a lifetime in in a period of two hours. 
so it's, it's so much, and um, you you just hope that 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 you continue on exploring, you know, uh, uh, as far as you can, but, and the director will allow you to do that. So when you're doing a take, when you're doing a scene, it matters. Everything, every moment is important. So. Yeah, completely agree. I think that's the benefit to you playing so many roles in, in, in so many different films and in TV series. It's another thing that sets you apart as well as you've also dipped into a lot of other entertainment avenues, which I totally vibe with, not only as a on-air DJ, but someone who's also well, writing my own book, too. And the fact that you co-authored your book with Chris Barrett, it, it really interests me on a personal level. And you published it a while ago, but it's still relevant because it's it seems like a, a guide to achieving your goals, even if the odds are against you. It's, um, I, 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 I don't know. I, uh, in between working in films, I go to high school, I go to university, and I talk to students all the time. You know, um, and, and, I, and I, I like to connect with people because one, it's important. Two, you know, it, you, you find that we are all relatable. You find that 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 we're all connected in such a way on having to figure out what life is about. Yeah. Um, even even when I'm DJing, you know, if I'm DJing at a big rave, it's a lot of the the electro, you know, dubstep, big room, big house um, music, and people want to feel that vibe and feel the energy. For sure. Don't go to a club. It's that. It's that. You really want to feel like like there's a there's a there's a mood that you create, you know, um, and and you want to be able to feel along with the people and go, hey, let's enjoy and experience all of this together. And that's the thing, you know, I I'm some guy who grew up in East LA in the projects, yeah, and I didn't have anything, and you know, it was it was only the the ability of Maybe getting my ass kicked, you know, I don't know. Um, you know, but my parents are to say, <laughs> we're going to give you this opportunity to be on stage in this theater and just see what happens. Yeah. Let's just see what happens. And I'm just, you know, I'm like everybody else, you know. Um, I just tried it. And I did something that I loved. And since then, if I'm able to be, as an adult now, to communicate with a younger generation and say, you know what, try it. See what happens. Whether you want to be an author, you want to be a director, you want to be a, a, a writer, uh, a, a, an actor, um, a painter, you know, a, a lawyer, whatever you want yeah. to be, try it, do it, see what happens. It seems like you would attribute that mindset and that, that mentality to having such a successful career that you have in everything that you've been able to do. Yeah, I've been, um, I've been lucky. You know, I think part of it is luck and part of it is is shut up and do the hard work. No doubt. I, my, my, I mean, I have a, you know, my, like my backyard and I, and I'm, I'm sitting down in my house and I'm memorizing lines. You know, if you, if you get a script about 130 pages, you get 130 pages of lines to not only memorize, but to break down, to understand, to know, to, to know the, the, the art and the conflict. And you really got to do your work and then, you know, when you're done home, doing your homework, you go out and do a play. Yep. <laughs> you do the work. You know, you do theater, theater, and you, you know, there's, there's a lot of times I'm, I've made mistakes. I've, they go action, and I'm like, oh, I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> you know, yeah, no doubt. Yeah, that happens, but, but it's okay. But it's all a part of life. It's not necessarily, you're going to make mistakes along the way, but I feel if you're continuing to evolve, um, not only as a person, but your, your mentality and your mindset, what kind of person are you today? Keeping your mind open to new ideas and new thought patterns and, you know, taking, yeah. taking other people into consideration and lowering the ego level and heightening the personality level. I think it, it speaks yeah. a lot to um, a lot of people. And I imagine that's tough in, in an industry where it's just go, go, go all the time, where it can be consuming, but it seems like you've got a pretty good grasp on all that. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't heard much terrible things about you, so <laughs> I think you're doing pretty well. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> are, there, uh, are there any things that you, you haven't done in your career that you've been maybe thinking of dabbling in on? Well, I mean, um, in the industry, you know, I, I, I said to work with an actor and I go, how much further can I get? You know, from commercials to TV shows to movies. Um, and now I've, from an actor, I've become an actor, writer, and actor, writer, producer. Okay. You know, where you really invest in the project that you're creating. So I'm working on with studios now and going, all right, I want to tell my own stories. You know, and it, um, 
it's a bigger risk. And, you know, I want to be able to share a story that, that I love and that, you know, how would the audience feel about stories that I tell? Yeah. And it's, the most important thing is, is that they're relatable, that they're filled with love, they're filled with curiosity, and they're filled that, you know, with, with growth. Yeah, and it takes a lot of critical thinking. It's not easy. Yeah. But um, you got you to, gotta, you gotta, again, shut up, sit down, and read. Read a lot. You know, I, I know actors who, who are just remarkable. And I'm like, hey, man, I just finished this book, and it took me about a month. They're like, dude, read a book one a week. Go, <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'll get to that level. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. <I'm> readers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's wild. I know because well, even having ADD as a kid, I, it was so hard for me to read. But there were there were certain wow. things that that caught my attention, that helped stabilize my mind. Like uh, Calvin and Hobbes was a huge thing that yeah. it really sucked me in, and I was like, I I just end up reading the whole book. Well, then you kind of take that and you're like, okay, now let's do it with something that doesn't have pictures to it. And yeah, some <laughs> <laughs> some people have the patience for that, some don't. But luckily, uh, that's that's changed over the years for. Me me as well this is a pretty interesting thing that you're doing with uh with your co-stars from napoleon dynamite you're doing a live tour showing and q a as well yeah now this is what you guys took off on wednesday you took to the skies and you're in kalamazoo tonight yeah yeah and, I, and i've actually been to kalamazoo before i uh, um i did a con con and I, and I didn't know how how uh the results are going to be and then there's like there's such huge fans in Napoleon Dynamite in here, and you'd go, I would see families at a Comic Con festival, and they're like, wow. Uh, and they're like, dude, you're paid, you're going to hug you? I'm like, yes, <laughs> hi. <laughs> right. And so so it, 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 it's really great to see that, you know, um, and to be able to do this tour going uh, all over the country and screening the Napoleon Dynamite where families can sit together and watch it on the big screen. And then, and then meet us, and then see us, and then, you know, hear our, what our stories from making a movie. So I'm really excited to be there. It's a cool thing, too, because like you said, it was one role of the career that you've had, but that can also be an open door for someone who's not privy to the fact that you've been in so many other shows and, and films as well, so they'll go back and discover you. That's that's what art is all about, you know, discovery. And then even especially when it comes to music, like for me, sometimes it's one song and I'm hooked and I'm like, oh, my gosh. And then I'll just go down this rabbit hole of discovery. So it's, it's cool that you were able to be a part of a film. Not only a film like that, but to have such a uh, a strong character within the film, and that you're doing this as well at the um, Kalamazoo State Theater tonight. Doors are at uh, six thirty p.m. Show starts at, at seven thirty p.m. And uh, it's going to be a showing. And then, uh, who's going to be with you tonight at the uh, Kalamazoo State Theater? I believe it'll be uh, uh, the actor played Uncle Rico with John Bryce, and then, and of course, uh, the Berlin Burn by yeah. you know, uh, John Heater. So it's and we're and we're I mean I love those guys I've known them for so, for so long and um, and they live really close to me you know so um, you know and one of the funny things is that when we're traveling and when people see us together they kind of they do a double turn going what what the heck <laughs> right what is that Pedro Napoleon <laughs> what is that Uncle Rico <laughs> they're like what are they doing here I'm like yeah we're gonna show man <laughs> really what so it's really cool to see. That's really funny. And, and tickets are still available. They have general admission tickets, 30 to 35 bucks. Uh, they also have a $75 VIP meet and greet experience. And it's super intimate, too, because you're in Kalamazoo. It's not like you have to, you know, because there's there are some uh, cons and stuff that they do in Michigan as well. But it's awesome that you guys are, you know, you've chosen to come to Kalamazoo. To me, on a personal level, I think that's really cool because, you know, back in the 80s and 90s, a lot of people would come through Kalamazoo regularly. And, you know, it seems like a lot of times when it comes to high profile events, they, you know, a lot of people just stick to the major markets. So it's really cool when you guys make it a point to come to Kalamazoo, still support what we have here locally, because it's an awesome town. It's a very welcoming and progressive town. And uh, I hope I hope they pack it out for you tonight. I'm excited for it. Yeah, yeah, me too. Awesome. Well, dude, thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I greatly appreciate it. Good luck on your next project as well. I'm looking forward to seeing that. Thank you, family. Thank you very much.